So when we're deciding the important stuff that's going to um, be important to us in this problem, we've underlined the fact that it'll double in 12 days, and we've underlined four water hyacinths. We started with that, okay? You also think we should underline unlimited food and no predators, okay? Anything else you think we should underline? After four doubling periods, how many days will have elapsed? Be sure to justify each answer in this investigation. It's not going to say justify every answer after every question. We need to make sure that we do that on every question in this packet. Okay? After four doubling periods, how many days will have elapsed? So four times what? Twelve, because twelve is the number of days in the doubling period. Equals 48 days. Do you think that that's justified? If we would have just put 48, that's not justified, right? Showing how we got 48, that's the justification here. In math class, justification doesn't always have to be in words, does it? Okay, showing our work is sometimes justifying our answer. Is that fair? Okay, after 96 days, there will have been how many doubling periods? So 96 divided by 12 equals what? 8 what? Doubling periods. After 60 days, how many times will the water hyacinth population double? Sixty over twelve yeah. equals what? Five what? Five times. We can put five times. That'll work. And then 120 you think is 10? Okay, I agree with that. As long as we put 10 times. So now we already talked about the fact that in number five we're going to make a table. So let's work on that table, okay? Complete the following table to show the number of water hyacinths from these four at the given time intervals. So we start out with zero days, which is our zero doubling points because that's our starting period. How many water hyacinths did we start out with? Four, okay? Now after one doubling period, that would have been 12 days. Because even though it is between 6 and 18, like it told us at the beginning, we've decided to go with 12 so that we have a common number that we're dealing with. Is that okay? So after 12 days, that's been one doubling period. So our process column would look like 4 times 2. Because I started with 4, I've had one doubling period, which would give me 8 water hyacinths. Does that make sense? So after 24 days, which would be 2 doubling periods, what will my process column look like? 4 times 2 times 2. Because I started with 4 and I've doubled it twice. Does that make sense? What does my exponential version column look like then? 4 times 2 squared. Is that true based on my process column? Do I have 2 Twos. Yeah. So how many total water hyacinths is that then? 16. So after three doubling periods, how many days has that been? 36 days. My process column looks like 1, 2, 3. Because there's been three doubling periods. My exponential column looks like 4 times 2 to the third. And my total number of water hyacinths is what? 32. Excellent, 32. After four doubling periods, how many days has that been now? 48, good. Process? 1, 2, 3, 4. Four doubling periods, God bless you. So exponentially it would look like four times two to the fourth. Excellent. 
which gives me how many water hyacinths? 64. Am I going slow enough? Okay. After five doubling periods, how many days is that? 60 days. How could I figure that out, by the way? Multiply by 12? Does it work for every one of these? This divided by 12, I mean, multiply by 12 is that? This divided by, hmm. This multiplied by 12 is that? Yeah? Okay. Um, my process column looks like 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five doubling periods, so five twos. So four times two to the fifth. Total water hyacinths. Excellent. We got two more rows to go. After six doubling periods, how many days is that? 72 days. Process column. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 4 times 2 to the 6th. So how many total water hyacinths? 256. After 10 doubling periods, how many days is that? 120. Process column? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Exponentially, 4 times 2 to the 10th, four thousand ninety-six. Everybody okay? Develop a pattern which you can use to fill in the days and total water hyacinths columns below. The total water hyacinths will be a formula which includes the starting number of water hyacinths, the fact that the number is doubling, and the number of times that the number has doubled. So if I'm telling you there's, a, there's, in this case, 120 days, I knew that was 10 doubling periods. How did I know that was 10 doubling periods? 120 divided by 12, right? Does that work for all of these? 72 divided by 12 is 6. 60 divided by 12 is 5. We talked earlier about going the other way, right? Saying 4 times 12 is 48. 5 times 12 is 60, so does it make sense that we're taking the number of days and dividing by 12 to get the number of doubling periods? Okay, so what if I tell you the number of days is n? What's the doubling period then? n divided by 12. I know, it's okay. So compare these rows up here to what I want in this row right here. Okay. The total water hyacinths is not going to be a whole number kind of like these over here. It's going to look more like a formula, like the exponential column instead. Can you tell me what that exponential column would look like? Or the total water hyacinths column would look like? 4 times 2 to the... So this says 4 times 2 to the 120. And this says 4 times 2 to the 72. So it is the doubling periods, right, to the n over 12. It was a good guess, by the way, with, with the n, because you know it has to have a variable in the exponent, right? You've got to think about what's happening there. Everybody okay with this formula so far? About how many days would it take for there to be more than 1 billion from the original 4? How many ways is there to get this answer? Right now, I could think of at least four. I want you to think of one, and I want you to try it. Let's see. That's thousand. That's a million. That's a billion.
talk in your group. See if you can figure it out. I'm not going to tell you right away. Guys, I'm hearing a lot of great conversations. Please keep them up. I want you to figure out the answer. E means times 10 to the, so if it's like 2E to the 6th, that means 2 times 10 to the 6th power. Okay, can I stop you for a moment, please? Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm hearing some great conversations, but I need to cut them off so that we can go on. Is that all right? Because I think nobody has the answer yet. Is that right? Okay. So from this table, I heard guessing. Is guessing an appropriate way to figure out this answer? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. What were you guys doing? Guessing also? Okay. Were you thinking of some other way before you started? Okay, so you were, you were trying to set this equation up and setting it equal to a billion. That's a good way to think about it too, absolutely. Anybody else were thinking of a different way? Okay. Okay. So this is what I did. I also guessed. I put it in the I put it in the in the equation and went to the table and I just scrolled until I found well, that's not a billion, that's almost a billion. And then that's over a billion. So I would have to say 335 because 334 is not quite a billion, right? So about 335 days. What's my justification? I guessed. And use the calculator, right?
Now, do you think I'm eventually going to show you how to solve the equation where this is set equal to a billion? Yeah. It's just not time for that yet. Okay. It's not nap time. How many years is this? So almost one? Almost one year? So you're telling me that some person came home from the St. Louis, excuse me, the Louisiana World Industrial and Cotton Centennial Exposition with four water hyacinths and got tired of them and put them in the river behind their house. And before a year was out, there were a billion water hyacinths in the river behind their house. Now, do you understand why they're called the worst aquatic plant in the world? Use your formula and tell me how many water hyacinths would there be after three years. How are we going to figure that out? So three times 365, why do we have to do that? Our formula is in days, not in years, right? So 3 times 365 is? So 1095 days. 1095 days. And now what do I do with that days? I can plug it in the equation, right? 4 times 2 to the 1095 over 12. Okay, is your answer look weird like mine? 1.17773 E28? All right, we're going to write this number because I need you to see it. Okay, so 1.1773. One, one, seven, seven, oh, I forgot a 7. That's a 7. That's a 3. So this is where my decimal place was. How many places to the right do I need to move it? 28. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, comma, 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, comma, 2, 3, comma. Wow. <laughs> After three years, there's this many in the backyard. Suppose growing conditions for water hyacinths were ideal and they actually doubled every six days instead of every 12 days. Rewrite your formula so that you can start with the same four water hyacinths and double every six days. What's my new formula look like? Four times two, n over six. So using your new formula, how many water hyacinths will there be after three years? So again, we have the 3 times 365, just to make sure we're justifying our work, which is 1095 days. And then I have 4 times 2 to the 1095 over 6. Four times two raised to the 1095 over 6. 3.46764 times 10 to the 55th. Is that what you got? Um, we're not going to write that, just so you know. Okay. But for the record, something that's 10 to the 57th, well, let's do 54th power. That's probably more accurate because it would be 34 septadecillion s e p t 
Sept. Where'd it go? Septen. D e c i l l i o n. Septetin. Septedecillion. That's crazy. Do you think? Do you think that the formula will accurately predict the total water hyacinths indefinitely, or are there environmental conditions which might limit it? Like what? Like what kind of environmental conditions? Like space? space? Predators? But we don't have predators, right? That's part of the problem. Maybe a temperature change? If you are the environmental scientist in charge of reducing the population, what will you try to keep the water hyacinths from completely clogging the waterways? Bring in predators. Diseasing them? Is that what you said? We would try to diseasing them. What else would we try? Would we think about trying? Burning them? <laughs> Extraction? And gasoline, I heard. What else? Nuke them, okay. Nuke them. That's terrifying. So, are any what weed eater? Okay, let me remind you just for a second that these are called water hyacinths because they float in the water. A lawn. Okay, that makes much more sense. A lawn mower. All right, so let's think about the some of the things. I'm not saying this is all. This is definitely not all the things we could try, but we could vacuum them. Okay. Yeah, there has been. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, bringing in predators, do you think that's an actual possibility? Yes. Can I prove to you that you are right? Oh, yes. I would like to show you this article that I saved on my computer. Because in Canada, on Lake Superior's Isle, uh, Isle Royale National Park in Michigan, some moose came to the island when it was frozen. Like the water was frozen, some moose came to the island, the water froze, they were stuck on the island, right? Then they had baby mooses, and there were more mooses, and then they had more baby mooses, and suddenly the mooses, moose? I'm pretty sure it's not meese. Um, the moose on this island are dying of starvation because there's not enough vegetation on this island to support so many moose. So, they airdropped four wolves from a helicopter onto the island. Why would they do that? So our purpose is to kill the moose? All of them? Enough of them, right? Call the herd, I think is what you said. Um, the weak ones, okay. So they did this once, and uh, some of them died. Some of the wolves. Not from the drop, just from different locations and stuff like that. They all survived the drop, just so you know, okay. And so this is actually, this article is about the second drop, okay. Because the first time they dropped them, they dropped an equal number of boys and girls, and uh, the boys died, some of them. So now we had to drop three males and one female. Uh, sorry, the girls died, so they had to drop. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Right now there's eight. 
equal number of each, four males and four, four females now. It, um, the arrival of the Canadian wolves boosted the park's wolf total to eight, four males and four females, including the last two survivors of a dwindling, dwindling population that had occupied the park for 70 years. So there were some there before, but not enough to kill enough moose to make sure there was enough vegetation to feed the moose that were there. So to me, this, this is super cool because this is not just a worksheet that we're doing in class to talk about stuff that may, may, may not be true or ever happen, right? So the other cool thing about this to me is that we have a visitor on campus today named Mr. Mitchell, and he is working with the teachers to work on our questioning techniques to make sure we're not ask, always asking yes or no questions, right? He came in this morning during my conference period. And he said, tell me what you're doing today. So I was telling him what we're doing today. We're doing this worksheet about, you know, wool, I mean, about uh, water hyacinths, but I'm showing you a real world example, like an actual from the news about the wolves. And he said, I got, I got another one for you to share with them when they get there. And I was like, okay, tell me. He grew up in Michigan and in Michigan. Now I, I don't know this for a fact. I'm telling you with the story that he told me. Is that fair? Okay, so asking me questions about it is not going to do any good. We could search it up. You guys could search it up later, okay? But in Michigan, hunting up there, you just go hunt as long as it doesn't say no hunting. You don't have to, like, go to your lease or whatever like we do in Texas, okay? So, um, but the animal rights activists, like, were freaking out about people hunting all the time. So they would go to, like, the normal hunting grounds and take pots and pans and just make a lot of noise. Just bang them together and make a lot of noise. And what, what does that do? They don't come out, right? So now the hunters go to hunt, and there's nothing there to hunt because there are other places because they know that there are people there, right? So here's what happened to that then, right? So this is these people who think they're doing the best for the animals by not being hunted, okay? Over the next spring, when those an animals weren't killed in the hunting season or whatever, over 40,000 of them were killed on the roads because they're jumping over the roads jumping in front of cars countless amounts of damage to vehicles lots of people hurt um, a lot of damage to property because people would um, wake up and there'd be a deer in their backyard right and but the thing about it is that a lot of time that deer was dead because the same thing happened here that we talked about a second ago is that there wasn't enough vegetation to feed all these animals that are still alive now. So the quote-unquote funny thing was that typically in the hunting season, there's about 10,000 deer that are killed during hunting. And they, most hunters, almost every single hunter, what, gets venison? right? Some of them use the skin for stuff. Some of them use the antlers for stuff. So it's, it's used, right? Except over 40,000 of these animals are ended up on the side of the road dead. Mm, that's not good, right? Nobody's been able to use that kind of the meat and the skin and all that kind of stuff like hunters normally would, right? And then especially if a deer just dies in your backyard, first of all, you're having to clean it up or pay to have it cleaned up, and you, again, can't eat that meat or anything like that, can you? So it took two or three years for the, the, the population to get back where it was so that they could hunt again. Um, and all because these environmentalist people thought they were doing the best thing and scaring the animals away, when in fact it killed over four times as many animals as normally were killed during hunting season. Weird, huh? So even when we think about, even when we're being silly and we say stuff like, well, we'll burn it. At, at the time when vegetation like this is taking over your backyard, you're not thinking really clearly and you're thinking, well, if I burn it, it's going to be fine. Except what's burning it going to do? Think about the smoke and stuff that comes off of burning, right? That's affecting the birds and the trees and the oxygen and stuff like that, right? What if we try to put chemicals in the water, like by diseasing them? All the fish and everything that could be living in that water is now dead, right? Um, nuking them, I think all of those answers are kind of obvious, right? Everything is dead just if we decide to nuke them, all right? So 
none of these are quote unquote stupid ideas because at the time when you're super stressed out about all these things that are taking over your rivers and streams and killing the, the things that are already there, they seem like viable options, don't they? Okay, so that's why, that's why environmentalists or environmental scientists especially have a really hard time when people do things like bringing in the non-native plants to different, to different places. See what I'm saying? Okay, um, so you have the rest of the worksheet to do, 12 and on. Okay, the rest of the worksheet talks about rabbits um, because in 1859, 22 rabbits were brought from Europe to Australia. And think about how fast rabbits reproduce. Okay, so think about what would happen there. Uh, you'll have some equations to write and things like we did in the first one um, with the water hyacinths, and you can just go from there. Okay.